I think this is the first month this year where I have like three books that I gave five stars to in just two weeks. It's like a first, it's never gonna happen again, but I'm loving it. We are not going to address the hair. Nope. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Franny and today I'm going to do a mid-month wrap-up. As I've said in a previous video, I've decided to do recent reads videos for 2020 since I haven't been around for the first half of the year and I have so many books that I have to catch up with you guys about. So that's what's gonna happen, but since June is Pride Month and I wanted to have more LGBT content on my channel, I thought that I would do two wrap-ups so that Halfway through the month you would have a video where I talk about some LGBT plus books that I've read so that if you're looking for recommendations for LGBT books to read during the rest of the month you can stay here and see what I've read so far. So without further ado, let's see what I've read in this past two weeks. First book I finished this month was The Boy in the Red Dress by Christine Lambert. I listened to the audiobook which was narrated by Sophie Amos and what an incredible job. If you plan on reading this book, I really, really strongly recommend the audiobook. This is a mystery historical fiction YA set at a speakeasy in New Orleans in 1929. The protagonist of this book is Millie. She is the niece of the owner of the speakeasy, which is called Cloak and Dagger. Such a nice name for a speakeasy. And Millie has been left in charge of the speakeasy for New Year's Eve. Now, on that night, everything is going fine until a rich girl turns up with some of her, you know, upper class friends and she has a photo of a boy that she is looking for and that is going to be the beginning of all her troubles because the boy that the girl is looking for is Millie's best friend Marion and he is also the star of the speakeasy where he performs as a drag queen. A few minutes before midnight a scream interrupts the show and Millie runs out of the club to see that they have found the body of the rich girl. She's dead. And of course, the main suspect is Marion because he has a troubled, mysterious past and they think that he was somehow involved with the dead girl. Millie will try to investigate and find out who the real killer is so that she can save her best friend from going to prison. I gotta say, I have no complaints whatsoever. I have nothing but praises for this book. The mystery was really good. It kept me guessing at every twist and turn. I had no idea who'd done it because new clues and new things kept coming up and adding and adding to the pile and people who at first seemed to be good suspects then turned out to be completely innocent and the thing kept going and going until the very end and I gotta say when the actual killer, the culprit, was revealed it perfectly fit so it wasn't something that turned out completely out of the blue and it couldn't have been but it was there just to create a shocking revelation, I guess. It was just perfect, it perfectly fit, it made sense and I was so shocked and satisfied at the same time. I loved the cast of characters, it was exquisitely queer. Millie is either bi or pansexual, I'm not completely sure. Olive, her love interest is a lesbian. Then we have other characters that are definitely bisexual. Millie's aunt is in a relationship with a woman. So it's just a very queer cast of characters and it was just so um, nice to see. Other harder topics are addressed in this book as well. Millie was abandoned by her mother when she was young, so we have some abandonment issues that she's dealing with. Also, this book is set in a very open and transgressive speakeasy in 1929, so we have some talks about how the LGBT community and other minorities were treated and were seen by the police and by other common normal people but despite that it was very fast-paced and entertaining and engaging and I cannot do anything but recommend this book because I gave it five stars and it was just a very damn nice read and 
I recommend it. Then I finished Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is the second book in the companion novel series of the Brown Sisters by Talia Hibbert, of course. In this book, our main protagonist is Danny. She is a PhD student and she works and teaches at a university. One day she gets trapped in an elevator during an evacuation drill and she is saved by the security guard Zafir. When they come out of the building, he is carrying her and people take photos of that and they start the hashtag Dr. Ragbay because Zafir used to be a rugby player, so you know, it's kind of funny. So people start thinking that they're together, that they're actually a couple and the thing is, when that post goes up, Zafir starts to get a lot of publicity for his non-profit, the non-profit that he created tackle it, where he basically combines together rugby and emotional workshops to work through anxiety and other disorders like that. Magazines start to ask him if they can have interviews with him and his girlfriend and so even though he's not quite convinced, he asks Danny to pretend to be his girlfriend for a while just so that maybe he can have more donations and other free publicity for tackle it because it's really working. Danny accepts, but the problem is that she's actually really attracted to Zafir, but she doesn't do relationships, she just wants him as a fuck buddy. That's going to create conflict because Zafir is a very romantic person who is looking for his other half, for his happily ever after, and stuff's gonna go down. I read Get a Life Chloe Brown earlier this year and I absolutely loved it. It was funny, it was so well written, so much more than I would have thought. I don't know why, but it was just so great and it had so much depth to it, but at the same time it was hilarious to read and I didn't think Danny Brown could be better than that. I don't think it could get any better, but it did. This was freaking amazing. It was hilarious. It was cute as hell. I was laughing and giggling and smiling like an idiot the whole fucking time and it was just amazing. <laughs> it was just amazing and the thing is, you know how romance novels work. The two of interest meet and then they start going out and have romantic feelings for each other or whatever and then something happens, they have a fight, there's some issue that they can't overcome and that creates a drift and sometime later towards the end they make it up and happily ever after. I was two-thirds in and everything was going fine, everything was perfect, but I could feel that that moment was coming, the moment of conflict, the moment where they would no longer be together and I didn't want to read that because they were just so cute and perfect together and adorable. I did not want to read it. But the thing is, and I promise you this is not a spoiler whatsoever, that moment of conflict, whatever, it came and it made sense and it was so brief, which I actually adored, thank God, because I couldn't bear them not being okay for, for too long. It came and went and it made sense and it was resolved in the perfect way. It wasn't one of those things where you're like, that's a really big issue. It can be fixed. I have no idea how they're going to overcome it. No, nothing like that. It made sense. It could be overcome. They did. They talked about it. They fixed it. And then they were happily ever after and it was perfect and the conclusion was perfect and I loved it and I give it five stars and if you are one of the few people left on the face of the earth who hasn't read this book yet, I don't know if you exist, but if you haven't, please do yourself a favor and consider picking this book up. You really don't need to have read the first book to read this and enjoy it and understand everything. Um, it might give you more insights on the few scenes that Dani shares with her sisters, since her sister Chloe was of course the main protagonist of the first book, but you don't really need to have done that to enjoy this one. And in case you were wondering, Dani identifies as bisexual, so we have LGBT representation in this book as well. The last book that I have to talk about in this video is actually a graphic novel and it is the first volume of The Avant-Garde 
by, let me do this right, so it is created and written by Carly Ustin, illustrated by Noah Hayes, colored by Rebecca Nolte, and lettered by Ed Dukeshire. So, let me just tell you right away that you're going to see volume 2 and 3 in my next wrap-up, in the second wrap-up of June, because the moment I finished this, I went online, I purchased volume 2 and 3, they're coming and I, I cannot wait to read them, to devour them because this thing was just perfect and adorable and I give it 5 stars because it's just perfection, okay? So, we have Charlie who is transferring to a new college of arts in Georgia. She goes to the students' fair at the beginning of the academic year, I guess, and she meets Liv who is this very excited, bubbly, very driven and determined girl who is trying to form a basketball team, a female basketball team, because she wants to compete in the first female basketball league, like at college level, is that how you call it? I'm not quite sure because I don't really follow or know basketball. Anyway, she's trying to put together this basketball team and she tries to recruit Charlie. So the thing is, First of all, this graphic novel is just cute and adorable and it is beautifully, beautifully illustrated. It has this pop art kind of style and colors. I don't know, I just think it's really, really cute and I think that the art style perfectly fit the, the story and the sports and everything. It was just, everything was perfect, okay? But what I loved the most about it was that this graphic novel was so effortlessly queer and diverse. We have a black lesbian girl, we have bisexual and pansexual characters, we have a trans girl, we have a non-binary character, and in the background you can see people of color, Muslim students who are wearing the hijab, and so much more. I mean, it was just so effortless. It was so queer and diverse and beautiful because it didn't feel like it was pushed or done on purpose in any way, it was just there. It was just a very multicultural and diverse and queer society, but it was just there. It was normal. It was so bubbly and happy and I loved it and I cannot wait to read the second and third volume. Of course it's a five stars. I think this is the first month this year where I have like three books that I gave five stars to in just two weeks. It's like a first, it's never gonna happen again, but I'm loving it, of course. Um, really recommend. I do actually have one book that was in my TBR, but I don't think I'm going to um, read or continue anyway. And unfortunately, it's Queers for Queers. Queers for Queers. What am I saying? Gears for Queers. <sighs> Maybe it's because I had very high hopes for this book and that was the problem, but this is supposed to be a travel memoir kind of thing about cycle tours and I read the first 10-15 pages and they were just so boring and weirdly not descriptive enough. This is about traveling, this is about visiting new places. So I'm expecting to find lots of descriptions and names of places and roads and cafes and I don't know, other things. I'm expecting to find descriptions and details and colors and things and there was none of that. It was just like packing the bikes and going into the cafe and then crossing the street and seeing rivers and stuff, but it was just so vague that it didn't give me any ideas about the surroundings and I think that's a very essential thing to have in a book about traveling, especially if it's a memoir. So I honestly don't think I'm going to continue it. It was, it was kind of a disappointing, so. I'm gonna put it down for now. Before I leave you, let me just tell you very quickly what I'm currently reading so you can expect thoughts on these books in the second wrap-up of the month. I am currently listening to the audiobook of Loveless by Alice Osman and I'm still at the very beginning so it's too soon to say. I'm not quite sure. I'm, I'm enjoying it. I mean, I kind of am, but at the same time, 
I'm having a few issues with it, but as I've said, I'm still at the beginning, so too soon to say. Yesterday, I've also started Heartstopper Volume 4 by Alice Oseman. Needless to say, this one I am loving. It's cute and adorable, just like the other volumes, even though this one should have some um, harder topics because if I'm not mistaken, Charlie is starting to suffer from eating disorders, so there's gonna be that. But I am loving it so far and I can't wait to continue. Let's be honest, I'm probably going to finish it today <laughs> because you have to devour the Heartstopper volumes, okay? That's just how it's gonna be read. And right after that, I'll be starting One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston and I am so excited about that one. I can't wait and nothing. I'm just so excited. So um, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please let me know if you would be interested in reading the books that I talked about or if you have already read them and what you thought of them. Also let me know what you are reading, have read or will be reading this month because you know that I'm always looking out for more LGBT themed recommendations. Feel free to like, share this video, whatever you want. You can follow me on all the social media places. Let's be friends, let's talk about books. And thank you so much for watching again and I'll see you very soon with another LGBT themed video. Warm hugs and happy pride!